Morning guys, so Natalie and I were just going to share the word of God with you. We're actually looking at Matthew 10 verses 27 through to 33. If you want to look this up in your Bible, Matthew 10, 27 to 33, but Natalie's got a story that she's going to share that's going to sort of frame this before we dig into the Bible. So it's just based basically on, a, I went for a walk the other day with the dog and came to this country path that was quite narrow and someone was coming the other way and due to all the social distances that we're following due to the governmental guidelines there's this lady coming the other day and she was like oh you've got to keep two meters you've got to keep two meters away and she seemed really quite scared and i wondered i was like what is she so scared of is she scared of me am i that scary is natalie scary uh maybe post up in the comments i'm, I'm not making any comments but i thought i don't think she's scared of me she doesn't even know me and it wasn't dark, you know, down the alleyway. But, um, and I just got me thinking, what are people so scared of? Because with all this news and media about the coronavirus going on and the death toll rising and everything that else that's going on around the world, you just think people are living in a lot of fear. Yeah, yeah, I think, I don't know about you, but it makes you ask deeper questions mm. of your own mortality. I think for all of humankind, we've not lived through any of the major wars. I know mm. people that might have served overseas and stuff, but, you know, like the First World War, Second World War, where people will literally face daily with their own mortality. And I think in some ways, although there's not swathes of people that we might know personally passing away, we're seeing the news on, on, the, on the news and it kind of makes you think, man, what, what about when this does come close to us in our town, in our family, our church, whatever that looks like? And it makes you ask those questions about life and death. And I think ultimately about what is after this, you know, like... What, what comes next and what do I really believe? And so I think these verses we're going to look at speak into it. So Natalie's just going to read them out. Yeah, so it's Matthew 10 and it's verse 27 to 33. It says, What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs on your head are numbered, so don't be afraid, you are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my father in heaven. Wow. So yeah, thank you, Natalie. The first point we wanted to make is around about having a right sense of fear. Where should we appropriate our fear? We're told here that we shouldn't fear those who can kill the body, um, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one, God, who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Yeah. And so just to frame this in its right context, like Jesus is talking to his disciples. These are the red letter words of Jesus that we're reading here in Matthew. And he's talking to them about persecution that's coming. In verse 26, or I think 26 and 27, it talks about the Holy Spirit giving the disciples revelation. Words that they have to proclaim from the rooftops. Things they need to say about the kingdom and that that's going to get them in flack with other people and that persecution is going to come. But the disciples aren't to fear those who could put them to death for their message. Um, and they shouldn't be wor worried about that. They should actually be worried about their condition of their soul before a holy God and actually being, being obedient to what he's called them to because actually their very spirit is in his hands whereas mankind can't touch your spirit. And so it's really an encouragement rather than a chastisement saying make sure your soul is right with God. Mm -hmm. It's an encouragement. And, and right now I think that's the encouragement people need is don't be worried about your life here and now. Like we're all born for eternity mm -hmm. and the eternity is whether it's an eternity with God in his presence, in love and in light, or whether it's an eternity apart from God, apart from the love and light of his presence, which is described in the Bible as hell. Mm -hmm. It's a place none of us would want to be. Mm -hmm. And so really the encouragement is how is your soul? Mm -hmm. what, what's the condition of your soul before God? Are you in right relationship with God and in the following verses Natalie's going to look at the next one we actually look at what the character of God is like um, so do you want to open that up yes yeah, so the next bit is about being afraid of the one and the one we've already established is God and what's what's this God like then 
if we should be afraid of him, what's he like? Actually, it says in these verses that he is one that looks after the sparrows, the little tiny birds, he knows the very hairs on your head, he knows every intimate detail of your life, the amount of freckles on my face he knows, he knows the deepest desires of your heart, he knows all the worries and the problems that you have deep inside of you, and he still loves you, and he wants to be in relationship with you, and that's your invitation today. I think that's what our invitation today is, is make sure you're afraid, not of what's going on around us in the world, but make sure that your soul is right with God. Yeah, and so just to really like speak personally to you, that sense of afraid, we're not talking about a draconian schoolmaster who's looking to wrap you on the knuckles because you're you've got to be afraid of him in that light. But it's actually being afraid of what life would look like outside of a relationship with this perfect loving God who all of this creation that we're living in now is is part of us being drawn into his presence. And once this is all over, if we've not found him, he's, he's, the Bible tells us that he's displaying his works just through his creation, let alone his word that we're sharing with you now. And so the encouragement is make sure that you're in a right relationship with a perfect, loving God. He's not a God of judgment who's pouring out buckets of coronavirus from on high to decimate the human population. He's actually a God, it says here, who's wanting to care for you and provide for you and draw you into his presence so that you might know his love and his peace in your life right now when everyone else who's living apart from him is full of fear. Do you know that God? Do you know that God of compassionate love who provides not only for the sparrows, but he's providing for you yeah. right now, wherever you might be? So it says here in verse 32, whoever acknowledges me before men, and the me is Jesus, because he's talking to his disciples, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. So how do we then acknowledge Jesus in our lives? I, you know, I go to church, I, I'm a nice person, I think, um, and I do I need to follow a load of rules? What does that mean for my everyday life, my life here now? Mm. How, how does that affect me now? Yeah, and so if we look at verse 27, it says, What I tell you in the dark, so Jesus speaking to the disciples, I've told you stuff in secret, speak it in the daylight. Mm. What I've whispered in your ear, shout it from the rooftops. And then he says, don't be afraid of people who are going to attack you and maybe even threaten your very lives. And so we can join the dots up about fear, not just in people, but with the coronavirus, fear for our lives. But actually what it should do is it should make our faith come out of ourselves. A personal faith isn't really a biblical faith. It isn't as such as we believe what we believe, but it should be on display, being proclaimed from the rooftops. But we see actually coming into the presence of God isn't based on our good works. It's not based on how much money we give away. It's not based on us being better than the person next door. How good would be good enough? Where's the line? Can you appeal? Is there an appeal process in heaven? Oh, I missed out by one point. It's not like that. What we see here is Jesus actually saying, I am the qualification for an eternal relationship with God. If you acknowledge Jesus in your life, if you turn away from having yourself as, you, as the king of your own life and you put the crown firmly on Jesus' head and say, I'm sorry for living my life my own way and I make you the king of my life. Please put your Holy Spirit in me so that I might live and flourish in your perfect plan for my life. Then Jesus is going to make you flourish. He's going to acknowledge you before his father and he's going to whisper some words to you in the night that he's going to want you to share with friends and family and neighbours who are gripped by fear in a dying world. Whether it's COVID-19, whether it's cancer, whether it's old age, we are all going to die. And we haven't really got to worry about our, our, our earthly frame. We've got to worry about the condition of our soul. That's what this is talking about. Okay, guys, so that's the invitation, really, that we want to extend to you. There are two responses, really. So the first one is for you at home. If you would say you're a Christian and you're actually feeling really fearful right now, if you just follow me with this prayer, we'll pray together. So let's bow our heads. Father God, I thank you that you are the King of Peace. I pray that you will come by the power of your Spirit and replace this fear with your perfect peace and joy. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. 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 And then the second response is for those of you who 
up until this point really haven't known Jesus as your personal saviour, I think the invitation here is to acknowledge Jesus in your daily life and that he would acknowledge you before his father. And that's basically what the Bible calls being born again. And so I'd love to pray for you if that's something that you want to respond to right now. Similar to how Natalie did, we're going to bow our heads and I'm just going to pray a prayer. I'd love you to pray in your, in your own home. Um, no looking around the room, guys, to see who's praying it. <laughs> okay, let's bow our heads. Father God, I thank you that you're offering me forgiveness. I turn away from everything I know that is wrong and not part of your plan. And I make you the king of my life. Holy Spirit, I receive your presence in my life. Thank you that you're going to make me conform to God's perfect plan for my life. I choose to live my life God's way. Thank you, God, for your forgiveness and for your peace. I receive that free gift right now. Thank you, Jesus, for your death on the cross and your resurrection life, which I claim as my own. Amen. 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 And so if you prayed that prayer along with me, then you're what the Bible calls a disciple of Jesus. You're born again. Congratulations. This is a really special moment in your life. And we'd love to hear if you've made that decision. So please do send us a little message through Facebook or um, wherever else. Email in the church. You can find us on Hope Church Sittingbourne. If you just Google that, you'll be able to get in touch with either myself or Natalie. And if you responded to the prayer that I prayed about being full of fear, then please get in contact if you want someone to pray with you or to encourage you we'd love to do that as well yeah we do that over the phone or, or whatever so um guys thank you so much for watching we're now going to cut back to ourselves which is going to be a bit weird and um, see you soon <laughs>